also say thanks to Congressman Bozeman, who I think is one of the best congressmen. No, excuse me. He is the best congressman <laughs> in all the United States. <laughs> You know, when John first ran, I remember uh, his campaign. John is one of those people who does not go out and promote himself. I've never seen a person who elevated others more than himself and has been as successful in politics. He is a model of what it ought to be about. And from the moment he's been in, he has always been about how can he serve the people of his district. And being in another congressional district, I'm so jealous, you know, that he's not my congressman. <laughs> and I wish he was. If Arkansas could have one, I'd want it to be him. Uh, but his effectiveness is because of his deep, intense interest in every person in his district and his absolute devotion to serving others and not being served by others. And uh, Congressman, you've just done a great job. And I think a lot of it's because of Kathy, but God bless you. <laughs> My sister opened this thing up, and she's uh, sort of, I guess, the MC. She acts like she's really a wonderful friend to me and has been so supportive. I'm going to tell you guys something. She tried to kill me when I was a little kid. I'm not making this up. She's two years older than me. When I came home from the hospital, and my parents, you know, got me home and introduced me to my older sister. The first thing she tried to do was feed me potato chips. <laughs> when I was four years old, she squirted back team in my soup <laughs> in an attempt to kill me. <laughs> she once mixed up mud and told me it was chocolate milk. <laughs> These are true stories. I took it easy on you. I can get the microphone back. I have things I can tell you. <laughs> so the show will be over by then. <laughs> so when I tell you that I'm glad to be here, it is in spite of my sister, no matter what she tells me. I'm really, really glad to be here because uh, I had to overcome a lot just from the family attempts to get rid of me and knock me off. Uh, I want to say how much Janet and I appreciate every one of you. And uh, Janet is with me this morning. We have been in every one of the 75 counties of Arkansas time and time and time again uh, during many campaigns, the uh, Senate, the Lieutenant Governor, for Governor, campaigning for many people who ran for office. I've been to every Lincoln Day dinner in Arkansas, I don't know how many times. Um, but during the past couple of years, when we went out on an adventure that was the most incredible and exciting adventure of our lives, uh, the quest for the presidency, the people of Arkansas were absolutely magnificent in their prayers and their love, their support, and I cannot begin to tell you how much we appreciate all of you uh, for your devotion and your support and your assistance during the course of the last couple of years. Obviously, things didn't turn out quite like we wanted it, but I'm going to tell you something. All of our attention, all of our focus, and all of our energy is focused now on making sure that John McCain is the 44th president of the United States of America. And the reason that that's important is because our country needs strong, capable, and tested leadership. And I know that John McCain brings that. You know, one of the things that I'm grateful for is that I don't have to sort of eat any words I said during the entire course of 14 months of the campaign trail when John McCain and I were supposedly rivals, but you never heard a cross word. Now, there were some who tried to say that there was some unholy alliance or collusion going on between us. That's not true. It was simply a matter that I recognized that in John McCain, we have a true, honest-to-God American hero. A man who has paid a price for his country unlike very few will ever be called upon today. And he paid it not only willingly, but he paid it with honor. And his whole career has been one of honor and integrity and of putting his country first. It was not difficult for me to ever be able to say, this is a man of great honor. And in fact, during one of the debates, I remember the look on his face when 
in the course of the debate, I'm supposed to be opposing it. I'm thinking that I should have done a better job. <laughs> well, of course, one of the debates, some little tete tete had come up during the debate, and I got one of my rare questions that I got during the debate. <laughs> and I, I used the occasion to say, you know, if anyone on this stage understands what honor means, it would be John McCain. And I remember him looking with such a surprised look that one of his opponents would make that comment at a time when I was supposed to be cutting his legs out from under. But the reason was because I felt it was important to tell the truth about a true American hero, and a true American public servant, and someone who had earned my respect. And I've never seen John McCain as an opponent, but rather a colleague in service to America. And as our nominee, I'm committed to doing everything I can to help make sure that our country has the right leadership. And I know that means John McCain needs to be elected president. And that's why, even though so many of you wonderfully and graciously, and maybe even rolling your eyes, supported me, but by gosh, you did it. Thank you. <laughs> it's time for us to unify, get behind John McCain, and I'm asking you to give him every bit the energy and more to him than you ever gave to me <coughs> to make sure that Arkansas is a state that he knows will be in his column come November and give us the leadership we need.